Hello, everybody. We'll be doing Nessus and ACAS 101 with a lab part two, where we'll be utilizing Nessus Essentials, which is completely free. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next slide here. Uh, setting up the Windows 2019 server. First, you're just going to install VirtualBox, and you can follow this link here. Um, once you're done installing VirtualBox, we'll need to also download the images for the Windows 2019 server and the Windows 2010 Enterprise. If you don't want to know what I'm talking about here, it's okay. Just go ahead and uh, follow the links below and put the links into your browser, follow them, and then install the images from the Microsoft website. Okay. Okay, so once you have VirtualBox uh, installed, the next thing you want to do is just open up the application. As you see here, I'm going to click on uh, Machine New, and I'm going to create a new virtual machine here. I'm going to name this virtual machine Windows 2019 Server. Okay, and you can see uh, it's asking for the machine folder next. So you can store your virtual machine wherever you like. I like to store mine in a specific location. Um, so I'm going to specify a certain folder I want to store it in. Um, you can leave it by the defaults or whichever location you want. Just make sure there's sufficient storage in there. All right, and then just select that folder. Uh, the type is going to be a Windows 2019 server. And I'm going to click Next. Um, next, you're going to have the default memory size. Um, in order to do this lab, I recommend you have about 8 gigs. And you can just click Next through the rest of this. And as for the file location size, um, you just can uh, leave it by the defaults and click Create. Once you're done doing that, it you should be able to um, start the machine. When you start it, it's going to ask you for the location of the image that you had downloaded from the uh, websites that I provided in the description. Um, so you're just going to navigate to uh, the image of the Windows 2019 server. And then you're going to pick that specific image and your choice is going to click choose and start. Now your virtual machine is going to boot off of that image. And uh, back in the days, you used to insert like a CD and in, into your uh, computer, and that was the image, and it would boot off of that. Well, nowadays you use electronic images. So you can just click uh, next and install now. And yeah, that's the same process. It's just the way that we install images nowadays. So for this portion, you can click that second option there, the desktop experience. Uh, click I accept. And we're going to click custom. Next. All right. And here, you're just going to insert your uh, password. Um, just make sure it's memorable and you won't forget it because uh, last thing you want to do is be locked out. So. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, control delete this and insert the password. And I should be able to log into my Windows 2019 server. It may take a while for it to load. All right, you click on that start menu. If you don't see it load. Depending on how much RAM you have, it may load slower or faster. When you receive this, go to click yes, so it can discover other devices on the network. 
and it should open the server manager by default, but if it doesn't, you could open it from the start menu. All right, next thing we're gonna do is just um, configure this server and we're gonna have to give it a uh, more memorable name because it's currently name that really long name. So we'll go here to system properties, computer name, and we're gonna just change this to DC1. Okay. And this is gonna rename the computer. So it's called DC1 for domain controller one. We're gonna go ahead and click yes on that, click okay. We'll restart later because there's a few other changes we have to make. Click on the IPv4, ethernet, But before we make some of these changes, we have to adjust the network configurations on VirtualBox. So go ahead and click Network. And for the attached to, um, well, let me decide which one we're going to click here. We'll go with internal network since we're going to have to configure the internal IP address for this Windows server. And now we'll go ahead and configure the IP address. All right, we're gonna put an internal IP address here of 192. And by the way, make sure you have your num block selected or it will just move over. 192, 168, 10, actually make that 1.10. Then we'll input the Subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 if it doesn't do it by default. And for the default gateway and the preferred DNS, you could enter the same IP address. All right. And we'll just wait for that to identify. Now we'll go ahead and restart it. Click continue and it will restart the server. Later on, I'm going to show you how to have our um, Windows Server connected to two interfaces, one for the internal network and another for the internet. So we'll have uh, internet connectivity as well. But I'll show you that in video three. All right, so we're going to send a control alt delete. That's input and then control alt delete. And we'll just input our password. Got to watch out for those num locks, those cat locks. All right. So we're in now. All right, and if you go to local server, you can see that the computer name is now DC1. We have that Ethernet IP address. We'll configure the, uh, well, actually, we'll add roles and features. Uh, we'll click Next. And for this one, we should be clicking Next. And we should be clicking Next for this one as well. All right, and for this prompt, you'll have to select Active Directory, um, DHCP server, DNS server, and let's also choose Active Directory domain services. All right, we could click next to the rest of these. And we'll click install. So we're just installing these features. So our 2019 server will act as a domain controller, serving up Active Directory, domain services, uh, DHCP, so it'll be laying out IP addresses, and DNS, so it can be it will resolve the computer IPs to the host names. 
All right, next we're gonna click three here. Um, don't need to do much with this actually. I think I end up entering the IP address of the computer. Yeah, you can add it there um, for the DNS. All right, so let's click on this flag icon here. Gives us the option to promote to a domain controller. We'll click on that. We'll click on add a new forest. And we're just going to input the name of our domain. So for this domain, we'll name it the following. ITLab.com. And we'll click Next. And we're just going to wait for that to load. So the domain name is very important. When we try connecting our Windows 10 client to the domain, we'll need to know what domain name we're connecting to. If you work for any business, they may have a domain name uh, for, you know, let's say you work for McDonald's, it might be McDonald's.com or .org or something of that sort, right? Um, all right, for this next portion, we're just going to input the uh, password we've been using. You don't need any fancy password here, just any password will do. Although I recommend that you use the same password that you use to log in. Well, that's not a good security practice in the real world. This is just our lab environment. And um, this is something we're going to spin up. And three months from now, it's not going to work anymore because the license will expire, but you know, it's something that we're going to utilize and we can always rebuild it later. So, all right. So from this portion, what I have to do is I have to input a password that is more complex. So I decided to enter a few more special characters and numbers um, into this password um, here. That's asking for. Uh, once you do that, you don't have to do anything else. You really just have to click next um, through the other prompts, right? So you receive one for DNS operations, additional options, pass, review options, prerequisite checks, installation results. Click next through all that because you, you shouldn't have to change anything from there. Um, the most important parts have already been done, which uh, if I go back here just a little bit, you can see that we had. Um, we had set the root domain name to itlab.com and we had specified this is a new forest. So as long as that is is done, then the rest of this is just clicking next. Um, of course, adding the password because it's asking for one, right? So let me go ahead and go back to where we were a second ago. All right. So once you click next through everything, it's going to ask you if you want to restart. You can just go ahead and click um, restart and then we'll carry on with the rest of of that. So after this, I click next and then restart it. Right. And then what you're going to do here is you're just going to enter the password. And now that you notice, it says IT Lab Administrator. So now you're logging in as a domain administrator for itlab.com, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and log in to this domain account. And now we're just going to give it a second for everything to load up. All right, and then you can see this flag here. I'm gonna click on it and complete the DHCP creation. I'm gonna click next through the rest of these, commit and close. All right, and so now we've done that, we are going to now um, go to tools, which I'll click on and we'll configure DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol. It allows us to uh, assign IP addresses to clients which connect to our network.
So we'll click tools here and DHCP. All right, and we're gonna click to expand this out. So um, we'll click to expand it out IPv4 and then we'll expand that out and then we'll click new scope and we'll click next, enter IT lab for the name, next. Enter a starting and ending IP address. So we're specifying the pool of IP addresses we want to assign out to clients that connect to our network. Uh, we'll start off with the 192.168.1.50. So 192.168.1.100. Okay. I'm going to click next. Um, click next. Next. Next, oh, here we go. So for the router default gateway, you want to enter 192.168.1.10 for the domain controller, which we are currently logged in as, and click next, click next, and next, finish. We'll just close this out. All right, and we'll refresh this um, dashboard here and Looks like everything is good to go now. We have all the services that we want up and running, ADDS, DHCP, and DNS. All right. So next video, we'll be connecting a Windows 10 client to our Windows 2019 uh, server and domain. So thank you for watching. Let's go on to the next video.